Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today we're going to continue our pandemic projects. We're going to work on a Pen Fierce 2 4000 Live Liner. So this is always one of those that folks get a little nervous about when they do uh, do work, and it's the bait feeder. And the reason they get nervous about it is it's got a couple of more moving parts to it, so typically what will happen is uh, it leaves you more uh, opportunity to make a mistake along the way. So I'm going to show you how to take this apart how to clean it up, how to uh, make it work uh, properly, and uh, put it back out fishing. So this one came to us from Jason. It's uh, just very tight reel. So my guess is it's been fished a lot, but hasn't uh, hasn't been serviced. So it's a Fierce 2. It's not the current line. The current line is now the Fierce 3. But very little has changed uh, between those generations. Even the, the Fierce 1 pretty much the same uh, same configuration. Fierce 2, you can tell by the Swiss cheese uh, spool, <clears throat> where the Fierce 1 has a solid spool. Other than that, there's not much going on there. So I'm just going to start by removing the external parts, and we'll start by taking off the spool. Then I'm going to remove the handle. The handle is a backwards gripped handle, so you turn it clockwise to unscrew it. While we're doing this, a special thanks and shout out to all of the folks that are first responders. Uh, we really do appreciate all of your efforts during the uh, pandemic to keep us all safe and to give us good advice on how to avoid the virus. And for those that have contracted the virus, uh, appreciating your best efforts to nurse them back to health. So uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Regardless of what your role is in the medical field or uh, whether you're an EMT, a doctor, a nurse, uh, if you're hospital staff, any of those uh, types of things, if you're a first responder, EMT, uh, long-term care facilities, all of those things, you're doing a great job, and just thank you so much for everything it is that you're doing. Okay, I'm trying to remove the arm now from this uh, live liner. There's a split here, and that split uh, typically can work off easily, but this one seems to not want to cooperate. <clears throat> That's why we're hiding a little screw back here. All right. We'll look all around. This one's probably going to take a micro screwdriver to get it out. I'm going to put a little bit of WD-40 on it because there's some salt build up there. Let's get that little guy out of there. There we go. I think we're, yeah, we're fortunate enough that we can turn. Yep. Try the bigger screwdriver. This one's just going to be stubborn. And that's a problem with some of these reels. There you go. We got a flat bladed one that did get it out. It always helps to have a, a group of different tools on your bench just because eventually uh, you if you find yourself in a situation like this, you don't have to put down the project and try and uh, figure out where that came from. Speaking of where it came from, my advice is always to take uh, pictures along the way so that you know where it came from if you get stuck. And also, pull a schematic of the reel. In this case, uh, this is the Fierce 2 4000 Live Liner. So we've pulled it. So it gives you a burst diagram, kind of telling you a little bit about how that thing is coming together here and what to expect. All right, I'm going to pull this side off now. Hopefully I'm going to pull that side off now. We should be able to <clears throat> move it along, but there we go. And be gentle with it. And uh, one of the things I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put that little screw back in the hole here so that I don't lose place with it when we go to reinstall. Speaking of reinstall, I have a parts tray there, you'll notice in the background. It's just the bottom of a milk jug, but I, uh, I keep my pieces of parts in there so that I know where to, to go for that. As a general rule, I do not remove both sides of the arm. There is a spring load in here, and that can, uh, can help you. And I also like to set it to the off position, taking any uh, pressure that there may be on that spring. Uh, out of the uh, assembly or disassembly process. Now we have four side plate screws I'm going to remove. 
These can be done with a flat bladed screwdriver or a Phillips head. In this case I'm using the Phillips head and I seem to have some success with that so we're just going to continue doing that. And as those of you that watch my videos know I'm going to lay these out on the, the table here just to make sure that all of those pieces are the same. It's not unusual to have a side plate screw that's different and if it is you just need to notice the location and by different I mean it's either different in the thread or it's different in the, uh, the length and uh, if, if you find that you have a different screw somewhere then note where it came from and uh, that way when you go to reassemble you'll uh, you won't have any issues so the fierce lines just been updated to the fierce 3 and some folks have been asking me what the difference is. Well, the Fierce 3 is almost a Battle 2. There's only one difference between what the pen battle technology is now and what the Fierce 3 is. There's one more ball bearing in the battle, and the battle has sealed bearings as opposed to shielded bearings. But other than that, they're basically the same reels now. And if you uh, are considering the two, understand that the drag systems have been upgraded in the Fierce. They're no longer the felt drags, they're now the HT100 drags, and that essentially on the fierce side of it, you basically are buying a Battle II reel. Uh, again, with the minor exception that you have a line roller bearing and you have uh, uh, shielded bearings. So if those are not that important to you, then uh, save the money and buy the Fierce 3 versus the Battle II trying to get that last one out. The first three of these are the same length. I'm thinking that this fourth one will be the same as well. And it is. So into the arch tray they go. And now we should be able to remove this side plate. And again, because you have this stud here, you just have to kind of be careful as you walk it off. I like to use the lever advantage of a uh, utility knife to, to pry up and I start with the section over here that has that uh, live line release okay this is a relatively simple and uncomplicated um, approach here for the gearing this is a good time to take a picture now we're not going to open this up we don't need to we're going to clean it up we're not going to remove all these wonderful springs and things, which is what makes everything uh, difficult in live liners. If you had a break, you could certainly do that, but you can see that we have a, um, a spring that's coiled around here. It's wrapped and it's set onto this uh, little mechanism that becomes your trip mechanism. Uh, we have a little bit of congealed grease here, which we're going to treat by just giving it a good hosing of uh, WD-40 to start degreasing that. And when we come over here, for the most part, everything seems to be uh, just coagulated grease and dirt. So we can take care of that. So and that's what we'll do now. All right, I had mentioned we're going to uh, start the degreasing process. I'm going to use a penetrating oil. In this case, it's WD-40. I'm flooding the case. That'll help to soften the, uh, the grease. And then I'll come back in and I'll clean that up. What we can do next, then, we can rotate this. so that we can get the arm of the cross wind down. And this one's a little sluggish up top, and I think I'm seeing why. When this is going up top, it's almost like a bottoming out, and we just have a bunch of grease and, and stuff here. So you want to bring it down. There's a small clip here again. It looks like it's going to be the micro screwdriver again. That's going to be the clip that's holding on the axle shaft. So take that off. Again, very small screw. And then this should pry up. Like that. And then you can pull it out. Like that. Now notice the orientation on this. These are the easy things. They're, they're almost throwaways, right? You, you just are in a rush and you figure this one's easy and you just you don't remember if it goes this way or that way. This hooks from underneath. So just pay attention to that as you go to do that. I'm putting those two pieces right there. I'm going to hold the cross wind block now. 
and we should be able to pull out the main axle shaft now. Like that. That frees up the cross wind block. Which has got an awful lot of stuff on there and I think that's probably one of the causes for this being sluggish. And then we've got the main gear assembly here. And we can see that there's just all kinds of junk and grease and debris in there. It's uh, the cause of the bottom end of this uh, acting poorly. So let's go do some of the cleaning that we said we were going to do before. I've sprayed this down. That should have loosened up the grease. Now I'm going to go in with a Q-tip and see if we can get some of that old grease out of there. And I have a little pick. I have all kinds of little things around here. But I have a pick that will get me into some of the places where you can see the coagulated grease. And dirty grease and, and the like is kind of the enemy of a wheel. And whatever kind of grease they were using it seems to have just uh, uh, dyed the case. But otherwise this is in pretty good condition right now. So I'm going to say that we're satisfied with the the cleaning here. So I'm just going to lay that case into my compartment there. I'm going to come over and you can see we've got all kinds of con con congealed grease in here. So we got to get rid of that. That's not serving anybody any good and that's probably why this wheel is uh, acting poorly. And we got a big wad of it here. I think that was part of why this thing was uh, bottoming out as it was coming in. I think it was just having trouble there. And then I'm going to come back to the teeth here because we have all kinds of dried grease in the teeth. And I can do it this way with a pick or I can uh, speed up the process with a wire brush which is what I'm doing here. Now while I'm doing this I'm checking the orientation of the teeth. I'm making sure that they're all uniform. Uh, that there's nothing caught in them any longer and checking it from two sides here. I'm checking it from that and I'm also checking this way to make sure that there's no warping going on in that main gear and this is okay. So I'm going to go ahead and use a fishing reel grease. It's pen precision reel grease. Come in here and load and you don't need to put it on every every tooth. A little bit here and a little bit there. Same thing, check the inner drive for that cross wind block. And then I'm going to put that in my, my basket there. And come over here. This needs to be cleaned as well. I'm going to grab a paper towel for that. Wipe it all off. Front and back. And while I'm at it, same idea. You want to check the teeth on this one. This is going to be a drive here for the up and down movement of the reel. So let's go in there. Clean out the grooves on the cross wind block, make sure that there's nothing caught in there. And then we can come up to the uh, cleaning part of this one. So I'm going to soak this because we've got some some old dried grease in here. And while that's kind of setting there doing what it's doing, just putting these pieces, these are very small pieces so I don't want to, to throw them into my uh, parts tray, but I am keeping them at a distance where I can't knock them off my bench because then you'll be looking a long way for them. So those that's my cross wind assembly and I do expect that to be the first back on. I'm going to remove the set now. And I'll just put that in the same place. We're just coming back up here. We're going to, to service the top of this system now. And laying that out. This should be a 12 millimeter nut and interestingly enough Mitchell made a beautiful tool for this. Just get it loose and then you can walk it off and then you can remove the rotor. Underneath the rotor then we have the, I'm just checking the cleanliness of underneath. We have three screws here I'm going to take out. 
is I do want to service this top end. Again, this reel is very sluggish, so let's go figure it out. And it's okay to, to stop at any point. Just take your pictures, know where you are in the process. Consult your schematic diagram if you, uh, if you wonder if there's something hiding under this one, for example, that you don't know. Go ahead and take a look at your your schematic. Check it out. Make sure that uh, you don't have surprises when you open it up that uh, that could lead to a disaster. There we go. So this is again this whole issue here with this reel is is just dried grease and dirt. So this is uh, this is the part where we take it all off. We make sure it's clean. So we have a shim washer up top or a burning protector. Notice that the back end of this is different than the top end of this. So this has got a, a narrower uh, hold. This is uh, a narrower shield here. This is fatter on this side. That's the downside. You want to make sure that you do that properly. Otherwise, when you go to remount it, it, uh, it will skip or it will tighten. Just doing the cleaning here. I'm going to flood that bearing now. I put the shield right back on the top of that so that I don't lose that in my reassembly. This is your anti-reverse. That comes off next. Notice that there's a shiny side and there's a uh, kind of a plastic side, the holder side. That's the bottom. Again, if you, uh, if you put it in upside down, in this case it's interesting, you'll have the anti-reverse working backwards. Then you have a collar. Then you have a second bearing. And there's a bearing shield underneath that. Or there should be a bearing shield underneath that. There is. So just put that down. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to clean off the dirt on the bearing. And the bearing shield. That's hard to see. I know I have a uh, grease stained uh, work, working board here. A lot of people ask me about that. that board has been with me at least 20 years, if not more. Kind of like an old friend, you're just not going to throw it out. It's, uh, it's been over several workbenches and some of the other things. It was initially meant to be a protector. Now I think it's just part of the family. It's just an old friend. So uh, yes, that uh, shows its, its character. You'll see all kinds of dents and dings and everything else in there. And uh, again, there's a reason for it. It's been here a long time and it's going to stay here a long time. All right, we're going to start by putting the shield back on. I'm going to flood that bearing with oil, put that bearing back on, put the collar on, remember what we said, the shiny side goes up, the plastic side goes down, next up is our small, oh, I'm almost wrong there, it's the small side of this. Then it's our bearing shield on this side. You're going to want to put the grease onto the bottom end of the pinion gear so that that acts smoothly. And I'm just going to sit this here for a moment as I clean up the bottom. You would like to take the case off because there's all this junk that accumulates around that little carrier there. And if you don't, uh, don't pull that pinion gear What typically will happen there is you will have a bunch of junk stuck back here that you can't uh, can't work with. The dried grease and things in here as well. So there's no better place for a degreaser like a WD-40. Just give it a shot in there and again let that sit while we go back up top here and put the rest in. You'll also notice we have some accumulated junk down here. Let's just go ahead and do that. All right, we're going to go back up top then. We've already lubed this up. I'm going to go reseat this. And notice if you if you had this wrong, this would not be flat here. If you had this turned upside down, there would be a ridge, and uh, you don't want the ridge. Find your collar and line this the holes up, and then. Again, you know that I put those three screws right there, so let's go grab those and put them back in. 
and that's just a collar that's going to hold that whole assembly in place. And it's fairly common on all of the reels. This is a common setup here for the battle, the pursuit, and the uh, fierce lines, regardless of whether it's a, a live liner or not. So if you're working on any of those reels, know that when you go up top to do the service, that it's pretty much the same thing with that anti-reverse setup, the two bearing system setup, and the uh, pinion gear. All right, now let's put that last one on here. And that's why I've laid these out on the table here because I didn't expect to take them far. And I wanted them to be the first things back in, if you will. So, no sense putting them on my porch tray. I just have to be careful not to knock things as we're doing that. This is the uh, rotor is next. And then we have this cap nut. I'm going to hand tighten that cap nut as best I can. And just a short turn. I like the cap nuts because they can't uh, can't fall apart. And look at the difference that spin has got now. Just from cleaning up and uh, doing the bearings. You saw before it was quite the struggle. Now it's uh, pretty easy. There's a bearing in the back case here. We didn't take it out. It's working fine. I'm just going to go ahead and oil that. Next up then we're going to put the crosswind block in. We're going to put grease onto the back of it and put grease onto the front of it where the crosswind gear is going to, or crosswind block is going to run. This is a crosswind gear. And we're going to put it in the teeth. That's your next stop along the way. When you do that, you want to put the stud down in the assembly. And I'm just going to come over here. It looks like that grease is softened that we can get it out of there. It has, so we'll do the final cleanup on that. Very good. I'm going to just trip this back to the off position. We've got that in the down position. We've already taken care of greasing up this. I'm going to put a little bit of grease onto the shaft that goes through the bearing, and then we can reinstall the, the main gear. Oops. Cross my gear out in the process. Let's go reset that. Okay, we're set up on that. I'm going to put a little bit of oil. I don't remember if I put oil in, so we'll flood that bearing on that side. And now we can come back and put the axle shaft in, but before we do, there's grease on that. That may also be a reason why this thing kind of slowed down a lot. I'm noticing that there's some hold. Pulled over grease up top here. I'm using a 4-0 steel wool to clean the shaft in. Put a light coating of grease on. You don't want to go too heavy or it'll just conce congeal. And then you'll see there's two slots here. Those two slots are where the hold down clamp is going to ride. Flat side, there's a D shape on this. So actually, there's a rectangular shape on this. So that goes in next. But before we do that, we want to put the hold down clamp on. Let's go ahead and do that for your, your top nut, your rotor nut. And those of you that know me and know me in small parts know that this is the fun part of the exercise. I'm trying to get these little screws in. I can hardly wait for the crosswind block screw. Okay, I put that crosswind block in. Now we should be able to hold the crosswind block and bring the axle shaft in. And then what you want to do after you put the axle shaft in, you see how it rides through that crosswind block. You want to bring the slots up so they're on both sides of the crosswind block. And then remember, this goes hooks from underneath. And then presses down. 
And then it's fun times with the little screws. So one of the, uh, the fellows that watches this, one of our viewers said, put a little grease. It, uh, it works from time to time. Put a little grease in the channel of your Phillips head. See if that can't hold you to get you started. And then uh, go ahead and see if you can't, can't get it to go. So that's what we're doing here, and it seems to work. So if that's if your problem is my problem, which is the I don't do well with small pieces, then uh, go ahead and do that. And then go give it a give it a spin. See how we're doing. We're doing nicely. Okay, so when we go to reinstall the side case now, that's the time to take out that other assembly. Remember it came out this way. And what you want to do is you want to install that by taking the tag arm of the spring and setting it in that carrier. And then setting the full arm. Underneath. This is how you have to load the the assembly. Oh, trying to do three things at once here. So you want to get that loaded, and you need to compress a little bit on the spring, and you need to pull the other side up so that you are under the carrier. Now you're properly loaded, just like that to reinstall, and that's a good time to put this on to hold. Like that. That'll hold your assembly as you go to reinstall the case. Remember before we saw the spring hanging loose, and quite honestly, I probably do too many of these to remember which is which, but that properly loads your spring now. Just make sure you're in that, that hole, nice and tight. And then we should be able to just load this in simply by working it over now. One more piece I need to check. You have that little cycle there that needs to line up with this groove here. There you go. And when you get that case snap like that, that's generally a good sign. So let's go ahead and put the case screw in to hold this now. Remember the case screws have the those little washers on them. And I like to go kind of northeast southwest on this. Just to make sure that I keep the tension equal as I put the case screws back together. And as you can see, there's a level of complexity on these that are not on the general spinning wheel. That's probably a reason why a lot of folks don't even want to work on a bait. Uh, feeder. I know that there's a lot of tackle shops in the area that just simply refuse to do it. Uh, one, it takes more time. You can tell just by the length of this video that it's more than a simple tune-up. And uh, the other one is that they, if you don't work on them enough, those little intricacies like the one we were just seeing there about loading that spring, uh, just kind of make it a open reel case without uh, without a solution. So I would advise you to uh, be cautious, take your time, have patience, and expect the unexpected when you're working on these. I'm going to go over to my flat bladed screwdriver. That seems to do a little bit better with these. And 
and sometimes you just need a general knowledge of the, the reel. I was con confused with that spring, and again, I probably haven't seen this reel enough to, to know what to, to do there. Eventually, you, you make it work, you figure it out. There you go. What a nice, nice little reel. All right, I'm going to just put the other end of this on. We have that little spring that belongs there. We're using the bigger screwdriver for this, if I recall. It may have been the flat bladed screwdriver, actually. It seems like it's been a couple of hours ago since I've been doing this. I know it's not that long, it just seems long. Alright, we got that. Let's go ahead and put the handle on, then we'll go up top and we'll check out the Okay, so let's give this a test drive then. What a difference. What a difference a little oil makes. Let's give it that click there, make sure that we trip the, the free spool lever. Working nicely. Let's go up top then. Now these are felt drags. Felt washers get oil. Uh, that's the difference between the, the Pen Fierce 2 and the Pen Fierce 3. The Fierce 3 switched over to the HT100 drags, and uh, it's my understanding that uh, you can use the battle drags to replace the uh, felt washers if you uh, need to. Now these got plenty of oil on them. The channel's clean. If you needed to, you could uh, clean out that channel since the top drags take all of the brunt of salt water. You just want to make sure that they're flexible and that uh, in this case there's plenty of oil on them. I don't even need to add it, but if you did, you would use a, a fishing reel oil uh, like Real X there, which is an aftermarket oil or any, any uh, manufacturer's oil. Uh, for example, here's a uh, pen precision reel oil you could use on that. But the idea of the oil is to keep them flexible. If they dry out, they're going to tear, uh, particularly the uh, felt washers. So just be aware of that. And then uh, we're going to just reinsert our clip ring. Make sure they get in each of the grooves. It's a little short here. There you go. That's how you do that. We'll put that back on. We'll give it a final test. this down, make sure that's working properly. And a little this braid. I don't like working on reels with braid. It tends to trap everywhere for whatever reasons. Let's just get that under that hold down clip there. I'm actually going to grab a little braid cutter and take that excess off. Generally if I have a reel that I'm going to resell, repair and resell. I'm going to strip the line anyway. Typically in your annual service you should strip the line. Uh, there's no sense going two seasons with any kind of line. Line is cheap enough whether it's braid or monofilament, particularly monofilament, that uh, you shouldn't risk the UV damage, the stretch, and uh, the general wear and tear on these things. You should replace that at the end of the season. Okay, that's tight. That works. There we go then. That's a whole different story than when we started this thing. Nice and easy. Got your spin back. Got your lock in. There you go. That's the Pen Battle 4000 Live Liner and how to take it apart, tune it up, and get it going fishing again. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, uh, please like it. If you want to see more of these, please subscribe. If you have a reel that needs to be worked on but uh, you're not up to the task, uh, then send it to me or, or follow the instructions at the end of this video. You'll see a business card that has the information on how to con contact me through email and we'll get you set up to uh, have your real service. So again, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.